Over the years, we've always had amazing depth at defensive tackle, but contrary to popular belief, Dallas has lacked elite talent in that position, particularly in the modern era. Don't get me wrong, we've had some great depth in these positions, but not enough pro bowlers or all pros. For example, there have only been seven players who were either defensive tackle or a nose tackle selected to the Pro Bowl. That's just seven players total out of 63 years. So again, this shouldn't be hard, right? Regarded as an undersized defensive tackle, Ratliff dropped in the 2005 NFL Draft until he was selected in the seventh round by the Dallas Cowboys. The next season in 2006 was Ratliff coming out year. He finished third on the team with four sacks, tied for most quarterback pressures, and he also finished second in the league in fumble recoveries. He became the starting nose tackle following an injury to Jason Ferguson early in the 2007 season, and although he was seen as an undersized player for the position, he started to dominate opposing offense of linemen. His tough and aggressive play style along with his elite agility and quickness gave him the ability to slice through coverages into the opponent's backfield all season long. In 2008, Ratliff had a total of 51 tackles and 30 of which were solo. Ratliff led all nose tackles and sacks that season. And for research purposes, he had more sacks than all defensive tackles not named Kevin Williams and Albert Hainsworth. He made his first Pro Bowl that season. For the next three seasons, Ratliff was one of the most dominant forces in the league, making it to three more Pro Bowls. Ratliff wasn't a stat machine. But he was one of those players that you had to see play in order to understand how dominant he truly was. But I think some of you still don't think Ratliff should be in the top five. So let's do it this way. Players other than Jake Ratliff who could have made this fifth spot in my opinion were John Dutton, Russell Maryland, Chad Hennings, Larry Cole, and Leroy Glover. In nine seasons as a Cowboy, Dutton had 26.5 sacks. In five seasons as a Cowboy, Russell Maryland had 14.5 sacks. In four seasons, Glover had 21.5 sacks, and in nine seasons, Hennings had 27.5 sacks. Keep in mind, Larry Cole didn't become a defensive tackle until the back end of his career after his prime. In Cole's six seasons as a defensive tackle, from 1975 to 1980, he had 20 sacks, which is still impressive for a guy past his prime. Ratliff had more sacks than any defensive tackle or nose tackle in Dallas Cowboys history whose name is not Lily, Pugh, White, or Hennings, but only Lily and White had more Pro Bowls. Now ask yourself this question, how many 7th round draft picks who wasn't even invited to the combine can you say went on to earn all pro status and become a Pro Bowl perennial player for almost a half a decade? I think it's safe to say that Jay Ratliff was one of the greatest draft steals in the history of the Dallas Cowboys. Leon Lett is mostly remembered for being involved in two of the greatest bloopers in Cowboys history. He's probably the most polarizing player on this list. Lett was selected by the Dallas Cowboys in the seventh round of the 1991 NFL Draft. I know that his sacks don't tell the full story, but Lett was the most double team player on those 90s Cowboys teams, and that's even with Charles Helley. In 1992, he was second in pressures. In 93, he was top five in pressures. In 94, he was second in pressures. And in 98, he led the team in pressures. I know it's just quarterback pressures we're talking about here, so let's make more sense of this. If we focus on the 1994 season, Lett had 26 quarterback pressures. 26 quarterback pressures for a defensive tackle is phenomenal especially back in 94 where they didn't throw the ball as much. If we research the top five defensive tackles and quarterback pressures in 2022, Lett would have been fifth in the league. Keep in mind, the majority of the teams that Lett played against in the 94 wasn't teams who passed the ball a lot. Take a look at this list. These were the best defensive tackles in football in 2022, and yet Lett 20 years ago was still amongst even the elites of today. What this essentially means is that let in just a 16 game season versus a majority of teams who were run first offenses produce 26 pressures on quarterbacks. The fact that Let's performance in 1994 would have put him in the top five list in the league in 2022, although he had less opportunities to rush the quarterback is mind boggling. But it wasn't just the regular season that made Let a force. He was also one of the most dominant forces in the postseason in Cowboys history. In the 1992 postseason, he led the team in forced fumbles. In the 93 divisional playoffs, he terrorized Green Bay and was arguably the defense's most valuable player. In the Super Bowl that year, his forced fumble turned into a James Washington touchdown. And in the 1995 divisional game, he intercepted Brett Favre on a pretty breakdown screen. It was the only interception of his career. 
but arguably one of the most important interceptions in Dallas's history. Jethro Pugh was selected in the 11th round of the 1965 NFL Draft by the Dallas Cowboys. He was only 20 years old. He played with the Dallas Cowboys for his entire career from 1965 to 1978. His 14 seasons represent the fourth longest career in Cowboys history. Only Ed Tutal Jones, Bill Bates, and Mark Tune played more years. But let's go deeper into this. Let's look at the numbers. In 1966, he had 5.5 sacks, which wasn't bad for a defensive tackle coming off the bench that year. Keep in mind, his 5.5 sacks was enough to be tied for 10th in the league that year amongst all defensive tackles. In 1967, he had 9 sacks, which was 4th in the league in sacks amongst all defensive tackles. In 1968, he had 15.5 sacks, which was second in the league amongst all defensive linemen, regardless of position. In 1969, he had 13 sacks, which was fourth in the league amongst all defensive players, regardless of position, and first amongst all defensive tackles. In 1970, he had 13.5 sacks, and was fifth in sacks amongst all defensive players, and once again led all defensive tackles in sacks. In 1971, he was second amongst all defensive players, with 13.5 sacks and again led all defensive tackles in sacks. And in 1972, he was seventh amongst all defensive tackles in sacks. Now, let's see here. That's 78.5 sacks in seven years as a defensive tackle. If we count his sacks from 1968 to 1971, he had 13 or more sacks for four years in a row. I did a little research, and I looked at the NFL sack leaders dating back to 1960. I skipped over all the defensive ends and focused on every defensive tackle who has played in the league since 1960 or even before. And when I say no defensive tackle, I mean no defensive tackle has had 13 or more sacks for four years in a row. Not Warren Sapp, Aaron Donald, not even the legendary Randy White. No one in 63 years has put together those numbers. Wow. And to think out of all the sacks, the Super Bowls he played in, the championships he played in and won, Pew wasn't just cheated out of two or three Pro Bowls. He never even had a single Pro Bowl selection in his entire career. To me, this is one of the greatest travesties in all of football. Randy White was selected in the 1975 NFL Draft by the Dallas Cowboys. White played six NFC Championship games, three Super Bowls, and accumulated 1,104 tackles, 701 solo tackles, and 111 sacks. When we measure his career numbers with other legends, he sits third behind Alan Page and John Randall in sacks amongst defensive tackles. But keep in mind, Randy White didn't rush the quarterback until his third season. White was blessed with all the traits for a great defensive lineman. He had great quickness, balance, toughness, ability, desire, intelligence, durability, and a mean streak that made opponents tremble at the sound of his name. The master was human, but some say he was half monster whose tales are still spoken about in the dark tunnels of the league. The master dominated the league when he went to nine straight all pros and eight straight pro bowls. Every now and then there comes a player whose legend is more sacred than the man. A time where the stars and lines and God smiles down upon his creation by making the perfect player. A player with grace, style, and honor. The number 74 has never been worn in the regular season since 1974, which was Bob Lilly's last season in the league. What made him the greatest defensive tackle in history is that he had no weaknesses. He wasn't stronger than White or a better pass rusher than Pew but he was elite in both categories. He didn't have the greatest motor, but he had great motor. He wasn't the strongest, but he was strong enough to constantly beat the double team more than any player of his generation. He wasn't the fastest, but he was fast enough to score four defensive touchdowns in his career. I can talk about the numbers, that's easy. How he harassed NFL quarterbacks in 1968 with 12.5 sacks. How he had 10.5 sacks in 64, or how he terrorized the league in 1966 with 15 sacks. I can talk about the 10 straight Pro Bowls or his 7 All Pros, but Lilly was more than just sacks and accolades. He was more than just a Pro Bowler. He was an icon, an idea of what it actually means to be great. He was Mr. Cowboy the first to be inscribed in the Dallas Cowboys Ring of Honor, and the first drafted Cowboy to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. 
Tom Landry said, as I've said before, another Lily won't come along in my time. We're observing a man who will become a legend. He was ranked number 10 on the sporting news list of the 100 greatest football players, the highest ranking defensive lineman, and the highest ranking cowboy. The only defensive players ranked ahead of Lily were Dick Buckus and Lawrence Taylor. Sports Illustrated named him one of the 10 most revolutionary defensive players in history. I think it's safe to say that Bob Lilly is a true living legend. This concludes my list of the greatest defensive tackles in history. What's yours? Until next time, thanks for watching and make sure to like and subscribe for more Dallas Cowboys content.